And here's the thing. Do you still trust the BBC? I can hear a lot of you going, still? What's with the word still, Collins? Why are you putting the word, do you still trust the BBC? Um, it's interesting. I, I wear a slightly different hat to some of my colleagues on this because I do support a, a principle, a underline and highlight the word A, of uh, the BBC. But it's really got to be handled with care in the 21st century. And any debates that we were having about a state-funded broadcaster even half a decade ago are now seismically irrelevant. Uh, and the obvious multi-platform TV, Sky, Amazon, Netflix, Apple and the like is, uh, it's not a slight game changer. It's completely altered the entire fabric and backdrop of television domestically and globally. So uh, is there a place for the BBC? We'll leave that argument for another day. In terms of trust, of course, what's implicit in the BBC's existence is trust and impartiality. And to know that when you flick on a news programme, not a satirical one, a news, the, the other programmes may annoy you. You might think once in a while they're getting close to the edge on a certain issue in terms of impartiality. But news in particular, uh, of course, the, the, the backbone of what the BBC are meant to be about. Their charter swears by it. Those that work within it uh, in the, the highest positions uh, absolutely steadfast in their position of impartiality. They will sing from the rafters about BBC impartiality. And I've worked there. And uh, it, it is mostly true. Most news organisations do mostly get it right. Sometimes they'll get it wrong. And they invariably, the reason they got it wrong is because of a cock up rather than a conspiracy. So it's not that somebody sat there in a big old meeting and said, we have to push this line and we have to push that line. And if there's a certain journalist who's on the telly or the radio that you don't like, you will project that kind of bias onto that person. If you think you know what they stand for politically, Andrew Neil gets this kind of stuff all the time. But right now, we're in another territory, the BBC at the centre of a fresh impartiality row after Newsnight's policy editor wrote an article for a left-wing magazine attacking the government's handling of the exam crisis. So right there is the problem. The fact that he even went there and, and penned an article it, it just shows you and highlights the scale of stupidity, uh, whether it was him, whether it was somebody else, whoever you want to blame for this. If you're a policy editor over there at Newsnight, you don't write stuff for left-wing magazines or right-wing. You don't write stuff for anyone. Lewis Goodall is his name. Now, the name uh, won't be familiar to most people. He used to do a bit on Sky. Um, he previously worked at the BBC, and he's now the policy editor at Newsnight. And his piece that he wrote in the New Statesman was billed on the cover as an examination of how the government's ineptitude created a lost generation and headlined how a government led by technocrats nearly destroyed a generation of social mobility. Uh, he will argue, in fact, I think the BBC did argue, we're not responsible for the cover or the headlines. Uh, yeah, you are. You allowed your policy editor to write the flipping thing. What did you think they were going to do with it? They don't care that Lewis Goodall works at the BBC. They've just got a bloke from Newsnight to write a piece for them. Uh, so essentially, that was the claim that the government had led by technocrats nearly destroyed a generation of social mobility. That is a hugely controversial view and an opinion. And Mr. Goodall cannot separate himself from that by saying, I didn't write the headline. You wrote the piece. It proffered the headline. It's how journalism works. You can't divorce yourself from it. I know that journalists get themselves into a twist on this one. You see it across social media all the time. I didn't write the headline. I just wrote the piece. That's fine if that's what you normally do. Uh, but if you're coming from the BBC, uh, you've got to tread really carefully in that respect. It expresses views in the article uh, that, quote, even if a set of algorithms could even predict with certainty how, how an individual might perform, then for reasons of politics and, yes, morality, they probably shouldn't. That is a clear opinion. That is a clear opinion. He's not allowed to have an opinion. He expresses the view that the exams crisis demonstrates the weakness of this form of technocracy. Uh, technocracy. <laughs> and is evidence that the data-driven government, as espoused by Dominic Cummings, is flawed. The whole piece advocates a change in government policy. The whole piece advocates a change in in government policy. Let me read you 
what their articles say, what their own rules say. Uh, it is very clear. This is the the rules at the BBC. Additional requirements in news and current affairs and some other factual output regular, regularly dealing with a range of public policy issues. Individuals involved in the production or presentation of any output of this nature have additional restrictions and must not express a view for or against any policy which is a matter of current party political debate. He's broken that rule with ease. Uh, second point, they must not advocate a particular position on a matter of public policy, political or industrial controversy or any other controversial subject. He's broken that. Uh, exhort a change in high-profile public policy, and he's broken that as well. The, arg the article that he wrote, quite clear, demonstrably, is a piece about how the government should change policy. This man is banged to rights. Lewis Goodall is banged to rights. He has explicitly written an opinion piece that contains all manner of other little elements. I know that the, 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 you see the, the supporters of Mr Goodall say, well, actually, what he did, he talked about how all parties have got it wrong. You, you cannot camouflage yourself and armour plate yourself just by saying, well, this applies to a lot of other parties as well. Some people might say that kind of thing. No, no. This was, as far as I can see, explicit. So he said all parties are culpable of an exam fiasco, but he went on to quote an anonymous head teacher who described the fiasco as the ideological endpoint of the strategic culture war within English state education. Man alive. Man alive. 0344 499 This is a blatant breach of guidelines. When you join the BBC... You, the whole point of joining, you leave your politics at the door. It doesn't matter if you're left wing or right wing. Everyone has a right to vote. And that doesn't matter. You leave it. Your journalists are often hired because of their political backgrounds. And that is fine. If you've been a huge player in the Labour Party or the Tory Party, that's huge, hugely attractive to a newsroom. Not because of your politics but because of your political thinking, your theorising, your ability to see the story, strategize and formulate, etc. But you leave your politics at the door when you join the BBC. I can think of two obvious examples. James Purnell was a cabinet minister under Tony Blair. Uh, he was, I think he was culture secretary and work and pensions secretary in the Blair government. He left the Blair, uh, the Labour Party to join the BBC in a senior managerial role. James Harding, on the other side, was the editor of The Times, and he went on to join the BBC. Both of those men were absolutely right for the job. And they both joined, not because he wasn't hired because he was a Blairite. He wasn't hired because he, Harding wasn't hired because he was the former editor of a newspaper that is centre right. They were hired because they know their turf. They know their turf. There's nothing wrong with that. So people often get that wrong. And you see it all over social media. But going, ah, but they used to work for this, but they used. It doesn't matter. It's brilliant if they've got a political background regardless. The key working at the BBC is that you leave your politics behind. 0344 499 1000. To many people, this story of Lewis Goodall won't have touched the sides. Most people don't know him. Most people don't read The New Statesman. And most people won't have put the two together and, and possibly couldn't see the problem. But it is a problem, of course. It comes against and right after the Emily Maitlis, also on Newsnight. This programme has form kids who clearly and demonstrably breach guidelines as well with her big old monologue at the top of the programme. Now, if you speak to anybody who works at the BBC, and I've spoken to a couple of journalists on this, they feel let down by this. They feel let down by Lewis Goodall. It's all, he can write for a magazine, or Maitlis can do her political monologues, but it lets the other staff down, the staff that join the BBC, and say, do you know what, actually, I am. this is about impartiality. This is about leaving my politics at the door. I have witnessed at the Beeb people whose politics I know, and I won't use any names here, but on one particular programme, an editor who was clearly a Conservative talking to a presenter, possibly a Conservative, and plotting how best in the interview to take down the Tory. How they could make sure they got all the right questions in so that this particular Conservative MP would be held to rights, held to account and answerable to the, the particular story in hand.
They left their politics at the door. They were trying to get to the nub of the story. Lewis Goodall is not leaving his politics at the door. Emily Maitlis didn't leave hers at the door either. Do you still trust the BBC? Bearing in mind, impartiality is key to what they're doing there over at the news departments. 0344 499 1000. It's just the latest. Um, I'm not going to say it's a long line. I'm not going to say it happens every day. To happen once in a few months at the BBC would be terrible. To happen twice in close succession is frankly unforgivable. And Lewis Goodall is a man who should, should know better. He's got a good pedigree of journalism behind him. He knows the rules. They said it was cleared by management. If it was cleared by management, then they should go before he goes, frankly. 0344 499 1000. When you turn on the TV and you watch a BBC News bulletin, whether it's 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, news night, news round, whatever it happens to be, do you feel you are watching an impartial news output? Do you any longer try? And it's not a... I mean, the average story you'll see is just somebody relaying a story, reporting a story. You're not getting opinions from presenters or uh, on-screen TV reporters and journalists. You're not getting opinion from them. Uh, but there are other areas that these things seem to leak through. And this is a cracking example. When it comes to the BBC... Do you still trust them? 0344 499 1000. 